What is going on guys? So this is an incredible interview with one of my private coaching clients, Aaron Chandra. He has a lead gen agency out in Canada and his success story is a really cool one because about three months ago, let me just pull up my screen, three to four months ago, he scaled, long story short, he scaled to over 30K in monthly recurring revenue with his agency after being stuck below around the 10K per month mark. And he started working with me um, when I hosted this initial 30K a month agency in a box challenge. I recently uploaded the recordings of this. You can see it's over nine hours long to my channel. Um, and he joined this when I hosted it live inside of my private community, which you can join below this video as well. Um, I've got a private school community with a free course and everything. Um, but he attended this live um, and then he actually went on to scale his agency to 30K a month um, directly after that, which is pretty cool. You can see he commented here and said, love to see this brother. I got a ton of value working with you one-on-one -on -one for meeting. Um, if, uh, if anyone reading this link is a real deal, but, um, he helped me scale past 30K a month fix my offer, my average strategy to get consistent appointments and hire the right people so I could scale without um, hitting further bottlenecks. So we break down absolutely everything in this training. We stayed on for almost an hour and went into a lot of different topics. So I'm sure you're going to get a lot of value of it. Enjoy. That's it. Awesome guys. What's up? So today we're talking with Aaron Chandra. He's got a real estate marketing agency out in Canada called Lead Gen Pros. And so obviously the reason why I all of you click on these videos of, you know, XYZ person making XYZ amount of money in, in SMA is you want to get the source. You want to get the secrets. You want to know how they did it, what happened. So don't you worry for you brain rotted DJs out there that don't have any attention span. We're going to get onto that. <laughs> um, but first we're going to just do a little bit of backstory, a little bit of intro, and then we're going to get into the source. And so first thing I just wanted to um, touch on, which I thought was, was cool. Um, if you guys aren't, following me or, sub or subscribe to me um i just uploaded a insane free training called 30k agency in a box challenge which um has already been getting a decent amount of traction you can see it's over nine hours nine hours long and so essentially what i did like about four months ago from the time of recording this um i hosted this like four day webinar event where i just gave away an insane amount of value kind of just showed behind the scenes of how I scaled my agency to seven figures and broke everything down. Um, and this is the recordings of that. And um, Aaron was one of the one of the people that ended up working with me one-on-one -on -one off the back of hosting that challenge. And I called it the 30K agency in a box challenge. And about three to four months later, he scaled to 30K much, which was pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, welcome, welcome, uh, Aaron. I'm super, super excited to talk to you today. Um, and yeah, man, let's let's get into it. How are you? What's going on? I'm, I'm good, brother. Thanks for having me. And uh, it's actually so funny. I, I never really connected two and two, but like you had the 30K in a box challenge. And yeah. literally like four months later, I was at 30K. So it worked, man. <laughs> That's what we want to hear. That's what we want to hear. So before, do you want to just like give a quick, just like <clears throat> in a nutshell backstory for how you got into the agency space? Because I think it's always interesting to hear like how, like why why SMMA? Like, why start an agency? And like, what were you doing beforehand? What's your kind of like, yeah, in a, in a nutshell story for how you ended up in this in this online space? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of a long one. Also, I'll, I'll try and keep it short. But I yeah. I got in the agency space back in 2019 through watching guys like Eman, which I think you know a lot of us did, right? Whether you bought sure. his course or you pirated it or someone on IG DM'd you, yo, we get this course yeah. for 20 bucks, and it's you know you get your hands on it and you you try it out. But um, <clears throat> you know, long story short, you know. Uh, many years of trial and error, you know, started an agency, got a couple of clients, failed, uh, gave up in 2020, you know, worked in software sales for four years and then kind of restarted the agency I run today in 2022, uh, but with more of a focus with SaaS, uh, at, you know, using GHL and transitioned it to work exclusively with realtors in 2023, worked with a bunch of coaches. But one of the challenges I always had was like service delivery. Yeah. Right. Where it's like, you know, you can get the clients, but like, how do you get your clients great results? Where I was getting clients, but they were churning. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what led me to find you in like late, I think late, late 23 or early 24. Yeah. I think early, early earlier this year. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's like a super kind of roundabout answer, but yeah, just kind of always been entrepreneurial SMMA got in through email and guys on YouTube and then just kind of, uh, s stuck around, I guess. Yeah. Awesome. So do you feel like, was that kind of the main, you had to boil it down to like why you ended up jumping in and, and we ended up working together? Was it mainly kind of cracking the service delivery was, was the main thing you needed help with? 
Yeah, yeah, it was it was definitely service delivery. Uh, well, it was it was a bunch of things, but I think when we reached out, I actually stumbled across you by total accident. I, I had no idea who you were, and it was another friend of mine. Uh, shout out to Mo Mo Vanjani. Oh, yeah. He was like, "Yo, check check out this guy named Liam. He's he's like crazy service delivery." Mo was, ended up okay, joining well. jo Mo joined like last week. And him and I were chatting over WhatsApp. It was the funniest thing because he's like, he texted me. He's like, "Yo, I just signed up for Liam's mentorship," and I was like, "Dude, like you told me to join like." months ago and then you didn't even join and he's like no no, no i had some about the coaching and stuff so he finally yeah. joined and I, I told him i was like yeah you're gonna get a ton of value but um yeah so service delivery was one of the main things and then number two i was kind of stuck in that like 10 to like 15k purgatory if yeah. you will where I, like for since november last year I always kind of been from like eight to like 12 to 15k for like months and uh i think a lot of it was due to just not having a consistent way to get appointments and deliver results in a way that like has your clients actually getting like phenomenal results so they stick with you right yeah. <clears throat> and then beyond that actually building a team i mean you help with so much stuff man it's hard to narrow it down <laughs> no for sure but yeah that was like the initial thing that you that you came with that that, that makes sense. service delivery yeah for sure um out of curiosity when you were doing software sales previously like what was the software and like what industry we were you saying to because i've noticed i've noticed a common trend that, like a, lo a lot of people that end up crushing it in the agency space have come from like some kind of sales background in some in some context mm -hmm. like that's always uh yeah that's always a common thread so like what was your kind of experience transitioning from like a sales-based industry and then applying that to your business yeah, it was huge. Like it was, it was actually a cheat code. Like I, uh, so I transitioned, I sold communication software. So how we had like Microsoft teams, uh, and like, you know, zoom, we sold like video communication software, but on top of that, we sold the CRM integrations. Yeah. So like software that integrated into like HubSpot, Zoho, Salesforce, but also the phone systems that kind of went along with it. So <clears throat> that kind of taught me a lot about like retention, you know, building monthly recurring revenue, uh, like how to, communicate with like business owners, like C-level executives, right? So I think a lot of that transferred over to the agency space. And to kind of answer your initial question of why I got into the to SMMA is because yeah. uh, I wanted to build monthly recurring revenue, right? That's yeah. the dream for everybody, right? Absolutely. Actually, I shouldn't say it's a dream for everybody. That was a dream for me, at least. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. And was there any other <clears throat> of the make money online models that you were kind of considering at the time or that got you got you curious? Oh, dude, I tried everything. Just like, yeah. you know, it's really funny. Like, I feel like a lot of people who end up in SMMA, they try a lot. Like where it's yeah. like, oh, I tried like copywriting or I tried like whatever drop shipping or like whatever e-commerce stores. And then for whatever reason, like all these people who try all these skills, it kind of seems like at, at, in the time of doing it, it's like, yo, this is a waste of time. But like many years later, if you get into SMMA, all those skills transfer over where it's like, hey, when you're the first guy, you're the only person doing your everything, like you know, you're, you're doing some ad copy, you're doing like your creative, right? Uh, it all really transfers over to SMMA. Yeah, no, 100%. I find. Yeah. It. And that, like, that was, that was honest, the consistent monthly recurring revenue was one of the biggest things that made me feel comfortable in the business model as well. Cause like, it's easy to get, you know, rose colored lenses around, you know, different models like dropshipping or e-com, all these other things, which you can make a lot of, a lot of money in but it's a very different consideration when it's like you're you're trying to grow a business that actually has to pay your bills and fund your entire lifestyle and like that you're building yeah that you're building a life from and to have that you need money coming through every single month like like clockwork and it needs to be predictable and so yeah obviously the model just makes so much sense have clients have retainers keep growing keep sucking clients yeah. keep, keep clients it just it just yeah works. yeah yeah. And it gives you the location freedom too, right? I think that's also one of the biggest reasons I got into SMMA because uh, for a lot of people, I think they're attracted to uh, doing a lot of work that's front loaded. So like, you know, between us agency guys, it's like, Hey, you know, once you have your systems dialed and you got your team and your media buyers and your client success managers, like uh, you're, 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 you can be removed from the business, right? It's not like that from the very get go. It is a lot of hard work. And I think a lot of people underestimate that, but once you're kind of past those initial hurdles, it's uh uh, you know, it's, it's, it can be smooth sailing yeah. if you got the right systems. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's definitely, definitely not smooth, smooth sailing all the way, but once you get it, once you get it right, it's, <clears throat> it's a good business. It's a good business to run. Oh, for sure. Um, so I think there's, there's always like two types of people watch, watching these types of videos. There's the people that are like just really struggling to get traction in the first place and are like under 10k per month. And then there's people that are like 
okay, how do I scale to the next to the next level? So I want to kind of give some yeah. source for both of both of those people. Like first, when like what what do you think were the keys of how you got traction in the early days? Of got like you, know, you say you're in that like eight to twelve, like ten to fifteen k per month purgatory, but like there's a time in a, there's a, there's a time and place where getting to eight to twelve k per month is like you'd be dreaming for that, and you'd be like, I just want to get to eight to twelve k per month, um, and <laughs> yeah. so what got you there in the, in the first place and what like what were the things that you figured out that made it yeah that made it um possible for you to get to that that revenue mark first um yeah what were the things that made it possible so good <clears throat> good question so to- total transparency i actually scaled to 15k per month yeah. when i was still working my day job yeah. um so i actually worked full time but it was about 55 hours a week you know factoring commutes and whatnot too so the way i scaled yeah. So I only had realistically from like 4.30 PM, if I work from home or when I get, you know, I commute home 5.30 to about 7.30, 8, 8.30 was when I would really work on the business. Um, so at that time I was just hyper efficient with my time and only focusing on the income producing activities, which at the time for me was cold calling. And okay. the the mistake <clears throat> I see a lot of people make that I wasn't really aware of at the time, but I was doing it the right way was I was just cold calling. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times as new agency owners, we focus on everything but the things that make you money. So, oh, I got to do my website. I got to do my logos. I got to get my funnels, bills. I got to do whatever. So at that time, I think the thing that helped me scale fast was just I only had limited hours in a day. Like I only had two two to three hours to really work. So it was just cold calling and literally just doing that. And beyond that was working with the coach. <laughs> yeah. So you can like brute force your way to like five, 10 K like where you're just, if you do enough like cold SMS or cold emails or cold calls, you know, you can slowly get some traction, but if you have a coach in your corner and we, you and I weren't working together at that time, I, I worked yeah. with another coach, uh, shout out to Eric Cavallars. He was one of my first coaches where basically for 14 months, like I, 11 months, actually, I, I, I made maybe like two or three grand in SMMA. Mm-hmm. And within three months of working with another coach, I scaled to 15K because of the right outreach strategies. Yeah. Where it's like, and hey, what did you change script. about your outreach strategy? Because that's a big, that's a, like a big difference in a quick shift. Yeah. So I changed my scripting, number one. Uh, it wasn't just scripting. So I changed the scripting. Number two, I had, I had accountability where it's like, yo, I've paid this guy like many at the time, like a lot of money for me. Right. Yeah. And, uh, it was like, all right, like I have to do this because I paid the guy, <laughs> yeah. right? And they say, when you pay, you pay attention, right? Cool. Um, so I had scripting changes. I had the accountability. And then at the time, um, I had funnels that really worked like in terms of a, of a service delivery system. So that gave me like supreme confidence that when I was talking to my clients, I knew I could get them results because, hey, this guy's gotten all of his clients a ton of results. I'm using his same systems. Mm-hmm. So basically the systems to replicate success and knowing I had that in my corner gave me a, like supreme confidence that when I was like calling realtors, I was like, yo, like this, this works. Look at what I did with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Is there anything practical that you can share about adjusting or executing a cold calling script for anyone that's, you know, also working with any local business <clears> leader <throat> niche, whether it's chiropractors, dentists, landscapers, kitchen and bathroom renovation companies, real estate, mortgage brokers, like, what are some of the like the practical things that you changed about the script that you saw increase conversion rates? So practical things about the script, um, you know, uh, I I think it's not so much the practical things to change. I would I would maybe say the most the best thing you could do is just get volume. I think a lot of agency owners get caught up in like, oh, what's the best script? What's the best word track? And they yeah. get so fixated on like getting the the perfect script that they don't actually end up doing the work. And it's like, yo, if you just did 50 or 100, if you did like even 50 cold calls a day for like five days, you're going to be so much better at cold calling than if you just try and find the perfect script. Uh, And you can, in theory, like you can write the perfect script, but then if you don't actually do the dials, if you only do five or 10 or 15 dials, you don't have enough chance to like make it an iterative process in the sense of like, you got to test and see what works. So maybe you have one opener you test out. 20 times and okay, hey, I'm not getting great reception there. Let me change the word track to something else. Let me test another 50 to 100 times and see how that has an impact. And slowly, you just got to kind of do some work, change your script, do some work, change your script, do some work, change your script until you have a process that that works for you. Yeah, I I think 
one of the things that still surprises me about the industry, but that I like, yeah, I don't like what some, sometimes I'm like watching content on YouTube or like, like I'm in someone else's mastermind or something that I'm in and I'm like watching their, their <laughs> content. I'm like learning something really good that I want to apply to my business. And then sometimes I like subconsciously get a bit like, like I, I don't, I'm like, I'm like, annoyed that that information is out there because then i'm like oh like yeah other people other people have yeah. access to this so right. that means i'm not i'm not special but then what i from my experience and what i see literally like 95 percent of people don't take genuine action on what they have access to like and oh so true at, at the at the end of the day most of what like this business model is very simple like and it's not rocket science there's not there's not much like crazy unique strategies that's behind the curtains that you can't find out here for free but the mm -hmm. beat like you said was it was it like if you pay you pay attention was that was that what you said yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i think like one of the biggest reasons why people don't like why are some people move quickly and why some people don't is how literally invested they are in the actual business whether or not that's like oh, yeah. em emotionally invested because of your current situation and you've got you know like people say you're either going to achieve through inspiration or desperation some people are like in a situation where like i've got to, i've got to make this work now and you're just going to hustle and you're going to figure it out one way or another um yeah. or you need you know inspiration by you know and that's why working with a coach or working with a mentor can be such a powerful thing it's kind of sometimes a bit of both sometimes it you mm -hmm. light a fire under your ass by putting yourself in a bit of desperation because you might be kind of squeezing yourself with how much you're investing but then it ends up paying off because it's a, it's a bit of a blessing and a curse with how risk-free this, this business model is because it's, there's so low risk and there's so low investment and so low overhead. It, it gives you the option to be lazy and it gives you the option to be blase because there's no consequence if you're not getting momentum. Whereas in so many other business models, like, you know, in any other business model, if you're starting a local business, if you were a tradesperson opening up even like a, I don't know, like a pressure washing company, you've got to buy a bunch of equipment and maybe, you know, start paying some employees. Or if you're opening up a local cafe, you've got to mm -hmm. sign a three to five year commercial lease and you've got to put people on payroll immediately and you've got to spend, you know, 30 to $80,000 in equipment and you're like, it has to work and you have to start getting momentum. Whereas you, in an agency, you can send E-Man, you know, $9,800 or how much he's charging these days and then just <laughs> sit and, and watch and watch videos and not do too much for yeah. a few months and you're you're chilling and nothing nothing that bad is nothing changes so yeah yeah i just think that's a really really important takeaway for most people is that like getting the momentum and the traction that you need is literally just on the other side of being consistent with not even a crazy amount of work but just like a, a consistent amount of decent work like treat it like it's a full-time job and it's impossible not to not to get momentum that's a good way to look at it. That, that's that's very true. It's impossible not to not to make progress if you just do the main thing. So like for anybody starting out, it's like, yo, if you made even 20 cold calls a day, every day consistently, uh, you're going to get better at the process and you get more comfortable with it until you start to book appointments and you'll build momentum, right? You just got to make sure you're focusing on the right things. And I spent so much time early on focusing on everything but the main thing where I'd watch YouTube videos and, you know, all, all these random things, right? Yeah, hundred percent. One of the things that I think helped me in the early stages as well, when you're like your main client acquisition source is a form of cold outreach, whether or not it's email, whether or not it's you know the loom, whether or not it's um, prospecting Facebook groups or Instagram outreach or any any of these things, is if you can um, if you can outsource like an element of the most like important part of your of your outreach, so that there's like always a consistent baseline of outreach happening without your time input the quicker that you can do that, the better, because then that completely removes the element of you don't actually have to be consistent yourself. You don't actually have to be doing the work because you can pay a VA, you know, four to six dollars USD an hour to send 30 to 50 cold, cold themes every single day. And even if that books you like three to five decent meetings a, a, a week, then you can be scaling your agency and you can be getting an extra two to three, you know, four figure clients a month. And it's extremely, extremely profitable. So yeah, that's just like another, another little side thing that I'd recommend.
Um, you know, that was that was a game changer for me. Let's not gloss over that real quick for anybody listening. Yeah. That was like probably the biggest thing that you had suggested to me where you're like, uh, for, for anybody, you know, I, I, I cold SMS to cold loom is my strategy. And I still do that. And that's how I scaled to 30K plus. Uh, I still do that today. And yeah. you told me this because I was like, I always struggle with accountability sometimes where it's like, hey, I don't want to be the guy scraping and sending and whatever. So he's like, you, you I, I don't know if you remember this, but you told me you're like, hey, you should just hire someone, whatever, to do this process. And that way it always gets done. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't have money at, at the time to hire, right? So I was like, okay, like, let me see if I could pay somebody on commission. And I found, you know, a good friend of mine to do that. And we scaled it up that way. So yeah. that's a that's a cheat code for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. And that was going to be my next, my next question because it kind of just like touched on, you know, the things that got you momentum in the, all, in the early days is like putting in the work, doing cold calls. What were the main kind of, once we started working together, the main kind of shifts and things that you implemented that, allowed you to get to, to 30k 30k per month yeah so main things um j- probably like just generally was just more confidence with service delivery uh was one of them like mm-hmm. in terms of building sops and processes around that was that yeah. was just helpful it's the thing that we you and i addressed right off the bat you gave me some yeah. tactics like kpis like where my realtor should be at you gave me the scripts and formulas and you know things for them to follow to get them good results but the biggest thing though, like the biggest thing in us working together was this, the outreach strategy you gave me, Yeah. Um, which was, I don't know, can I say it? Is it, is it too secret or can I, can I drop it? It depends how much you <laughs> want to reveal. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll say it. So I, I don't know who's going to really implement this, right? But if you yeah. do, I promise you, you'll get like, oh dude, you'll get so many, so many demos on your calendar, but uh, it's just cold outreach, right? Uh, through Loom, but it's it's how so we would like because like Loom, it's how Loom we do. outreach, yeah, it's Loom outreach is not that's like one of the oldest strategies in SMMA, but it's how you it's how you execute on it is is the secret sauce. There's some nuances, right? So I don't yeah. know, maybe you got to join this program and find out. <laughs> but the secret sauce, though, uh, in terms of what I'll disclose, is like our process is a lot of work, and I just I just I even I, I could probably say what it is because I don't think people will really take it into account and execute it because it's a lot of work. Yeah. But like literally we'll scrape like custom databases either in say Facebook ads library or even like YouTube, depending on what kind of fulfillment you're doing. And like my team and I will like manually go through all the people running ads on Facebook library, for example, like screenshot their ads and be like, hey Liam, I was looking at, you know, real estate in Perth or whatever area, saw your ad, uh, saw a couple quick tweaks that I think you could make to get more inbound home sellers. Is it cool if I, you know, I made a quick two minute audit. Is it cool if I send it over to you? Like that's the sample of a message. Yeah. Uh, and I would like manually make looms and we'd book like an appointment a day on autopilot. And then I start to call the leads and then I book two to three appointments a day. And just by doing that process and sticking with it every day, like you mentioned, like, Hey, it might be slow at first, but just stick with it and you'll build momentum. So I just trusted the process uh, and it worked like so well. And the reception I got from realtors was like, wow, like you actually like care about me. Like you actually like went through all this trouble. Like you personalized it compared to everybody else who's cold emailing, cold DMing. Hey, had a quick question for you. Or, hey, are you looking for more leads in so-and-so area? And it's like, come on, man. These guys are getting harassed by that kind of stuff all day. Yeah. I think like a, a question that I've been asking myself, like as I continue to level up and grow my business to be more competitive and create a moat around what you're doing is just asking yourself, what aren't others willing to do? Like what, what's mm-hmm. the work that people that, that everyone else isn't willing to do. That's not like necessarily that intense. It's not like you're just like working yourself to the bone, but it's like, what's something that like, it could just go like one step further or like do like two extra things to make this a little bit better that people probably mm-hmm. are going to be like, Oh, that's, that would be annoying or that would be a little bit too, too hard to do. Cause like what you're doing is not, it's not that much extra work. Like you're like, you're just, per- you're just like slightly personal, more personalizing the initial outreach and then just doing a good loom to people that, to people that respond. And so like one of the things that, one of the things that I talked about in one of the old like videos that I created on prospecting strategy is you've like, there's so many different outreach methods and they all kind of fall on a bit of an axis of how, um what's the conversion rate like what like per message sent or per inter- interaction how many people are going to respond to that thing and then how personalized is that so like there's some outreach me- methods that are, that are really there just to do a lot of volume and just spray and pray like cold email just because you know open rates already low you're not going to want to 
crazy hyper, you know, personalized an, an email because there's a point of diminishing returns. You're best just doing a bunch of volume and you might get a few extra, a few extra meetings booked per week. But mm-hmm. with other methods like Loom, the more that you the more that you're smart about how you personalize the initial outreach and like the execution of the loom itself, then that pays off big. Um, and you don't have to do too much extra for this. If you just like, yeah, like include a screenshot of like something of theirs with how you're reaching out, whether it's the YouTube channel or one of the ads. And then if you mention the location that you're in, cause you've checked out their profile and you know, okay, they're in this area. If you just do that, like a VA can do most of that. And then you just have to film the video and then boom, like it's, you've got a, you've got a pretty cool system in place. So you kind of want to find that sweet spot of like volume, but making it personalized and yeah, then it works. I think people are scared to do that because it's like, oh, well then that's going to take ages and I can't send, you know, 50 messages a day or I can't send hundred messages a day, but you don't, yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to. Yeah. yeah. And the alternative to is if you're below 10 K, it's like, well, what do you see? What else are you doing with your time? Literally. Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you should be doing outreach, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Cool, man. So, um, other than that, the average strategy was the yeah, so average service service delivery systems. I think that's obviously a big one for most agency owners, um, agency owners as well. Is like I see so many agencies. It's obvious that they're like holding back from going all in on sales and like picking up the phone because in your gut, like it, you you have that l- lack of confidence and you don't actually believe that what you're offering is a good service and. Mm-hmm that comes through in your conviction of how well you articulate your offer on the, on the phones or on your zoom calls. And that comes mm-hmm. across in how aggressive you are with pushing your, your thing and trying to, trying to get people on it. Um, and so with like all the agency owners that I've worked with up, up until this point, I've seen that that's been a common thread with some of the biggest transformations is once you feel like you have access to, or you have the, the blueprint to a service delivery system that you can see works then that kind of just like lights up your motivation. You're like, all right, I know what I need to do. Like I can see that I'm going to be able to make Mm -hmm. these, I I can make these people a lot of money. I've got a valuable service. Now I just need to go out and sell it. And like at the end of the day, that is just a mindset thing, but it is important. And you need that. uh, Most people need that kind of like firsthand experience and firsthand clarity to go, okay, I've got something that I know works. Because the way that most people kind of enter this space is with a lot of the kind of introductory SMA type programs and they purposefully kind of like gloss over practical fulfillment strategies because it would genuinely be like I get it because like if I was creating a, a, a course for beginners it's hard to create like customized like niche specific training for like how to get results in every single niche um, mm-hmm. and you and you wouldn't necessarily be wanting to tell like thousands of students either like exactly work with these set of like the six to eight best niches in the in the agency model because then you just like for sat, sure sat sat the market. market. Um yeah. so but yeah the reality is, is that a lot of agency owners kind of feel like they don't really have a great service that, that, that they're offering. So I think that's once you've kind of got the foundations of the of the business model and you've got a little bit of traction, I think that's the the number one thing that everyone everyone should go all in on is create an excellent service because that's what's gonna make it easy to sell, easy to get good case studies, easy to retain clients. And everything kind of just snowballs from there. Yeah, and just one note I want to add on to that. I think Hermosi mentioned this uh, in, in, a, in a, a, a reel or something, but it's like if you focus on like one thing in your business, right? You did this one thing so well that you would get more referrals and, and repeat business and so forth. What would that one thing be? And I think a lot of agency owners neglect service delivery. Yeah. But if you really think about it, right, you have like, phenomenal service delivery. Like, you know, you work with the realtor and you get them a eight, nine, 10, 12 X ROAS, whatever. Uh, there's no reason why they would not resign with you and tell, tell all the realtor friends, yeah. right? Where it's like, Hey, look at the service that so-and-so did. Like I'm crushing it. If you work with him too, you'll crush it as well. And we're at the point now where the last eight, eight clients we signed this month, uh, four of them are from referrals. Yep. And I was like, damn, awesome. we, we never used to get referrals for like now half our business, uh, at least for this month, right. Was from referrals. And it's, it's so funny because it feels like a cheat code mm-hmm. where it's like you, you get a referral and then they, they almost already want to work with you, right? Because they see what you've done for another realtor or another yeah. client, right? So yeah, 100%. You, you help me with that best. though, for sure. So Probably. service delivery, dialing that in and then you get referrals. Yeah. Yeah. Referrals are just the best because then like your business is growing without having to <laughs> acquire, like having to spend any money on client acquisition. And they're often better clients as well because they're already 
it's just like a it's like a layoff like someone just gives you the recommend and then they're just ready to go and they want to work with you yeah yeah it's it's, it's the cheat code for sure that goes very like is very glossed over in our space i feel like not a lot of people talk about that 100 percent. um cool i think yeah i think we've covered a lot of a lot of good stuff is there any other kind of just like general topics or takeaways for kind of newer or intermediate agency owners that you feel like have been some of your biggest kind of breakthroughs or takeaways recently of things that you figured out about the game? Uh, yeah. And I'll speak with the context of working with you yeah. uh, because I think there's a couple of things that you helped me with that is probably more of an intermediate problem, but if you're kind of, you know, at the eight to 10, 12 K mark, you're probably going to want to start looking at getting help. Uh, you know, whether it's with the VA or like a media buyer or somebody to help out with creating funnels and that kind of thing. So you helped give me a lot of clarity on what team members to hire and at yeah. what revenue points. Yeah. Um, so I actually modeled your, your, I use one of your models about like how to hire like a backend fulfillment system. So where I have my media buyer and my CSM and like how I'm going to transition this into the future as we scale our, our growth. Um, so you gave me a lot of clarity there. Um, to those watching, I don't know if there's just like, that's going to be super relevant, but that's something yeah. that you helped me out with. That was like huge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's like, cause everything that I've like put, you know, that when I work with you guys and I put into the program is obviously things that I have just figured out and, and they were the biggest challenges that I had in my agency as well. And so knowing who to hire and when, um, yeah, I think one of Pomozi's quotes is like most of the time, if you look at like the biggest uh, shifts in revenue and trajectory, whether if it's a big uplift in revenue or if it's a big downshift in revenue, it's almost always as a result of like hiring or losing a key team member in the in the business. It's like if you notice a big decrease in revenue, what's well, like most of the time you can you know connect the dots back to someone left, someone left the company. Like for me, one of the biggest um the biggest periods of growth was the first sales rep that I hired it's like the first time that I yeah took sales sales calls off my plate and we were just going hard on paid ads I went from like 25k to 83 84k a month in a span of four months and I was I, I wasn't doing anything different I was just running the same ad and just had a different person taking the calls and they could take more calls and they were just focusing on that so all of those but knowing when to do it um and Cause it's scary. Like it's, it's scary to you know pay more for a role than you've you know ever paid for before the whole, you got to take one step back to take two steps forward mentality. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Hiring people is one of the, <laughs> one of the most important things with growing this business model. Yeah. Yeah. I like to think of it like a rubber band, right? You got to like kind of pull back for a bit to really like propel yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's which a good is true. Yeah. Cool. Anything, anything <laughs> else? Was that, was that the main one? Who to hire and when? Uh, in terms of what, just like generally working with you or just like just, just general takeaways in general? Stuff. Yeah, just like kind of just yeah. thinking back of, you know, the past kind of six to eight months of being in the agency space and the momentum that you've built, like just any big picture takeaways that'd be valuable for other agency owners in the space. Yeah, so there's a lot we covered so far. So like outreach strategies, the importance of service delivery to get referrals, uh, hiring the right people. I think one of the other things that's been really big for me too is tracking uh, the right metrics mm -hmm. or just tracking in general. So I think a lot of agency owners, uh, they don't track outreach efforts, uh, which is mind boggling to me. Uh, tracking outreach efforts in the sense of like, it's, it's a little bit different, like depending on how you're getting clients, right? But if you're doing cold outbound, whatever's SMS, emails at like whatever you're doing, you got to track that uh, and have benchmarks that you got to hit every day. And one of the things that I was doing when I was stuck in that eight to 10, 12 K purgatory was like, I was super inconsistent with my outreach um, where it's like one day, maybe I'll do, you know, 30 dials. One day I do 80, one day I do seven, the next three days I do zero. <laughs> and the thing that like shifted it for me, that was such a simple tweak that it sounds stupid to say it out loud because it's right under your nose. But uh, it's just to be consistent with outreach. Yeah. Like if you're going to do, you know, uh, start small, start with a hundred dials a week and just do 20 a day, right? If you're at that stage and it's better to do 20 every single day than have like zero one day, then 17, then 29, then four and then 40, right? Just build uh, the, build the consistency muscle. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think tracking thing is huge. It's one of those things that's like so simple and it's like such a boring recommendation. And when you say it, like people know they need to do it, but then 
you don't do it. Um, and then you don't do it in all the areas of your business that you actually need to, because it's annoying to actually plug in the numbers. And again, that's another thing where it's just like, just get VAs to do it. Just get, have tracking sheets and get, yeah. get VAs to plug in, plug in the numbers. But yeah, like, you know, Hamodi has quotes, like if you don't, if you don't track, you don't care. It's quotes like if you, uh, whatever you measure, you manage, you manage and all that. So I saw one of his reels recently where he was kind of giving that advice in context to checking your bank account every day. It's like, most people don't check their bank. Like at the end of the day, like the the number one kind of uh, vital sign of a business is did the bank account go up or down? Like that's that's literally yeah. the, number one, the number one thing that matters. And I know like myself for a, a long time in my business, I like had, I was literally almost scared to check my bank account because I was just like had resistance to, I didn't want to know the number. Like I just like the, even if it was not even bad, like I just, just in comparison to what it what it had been or like if I knew that we were, I felt like we were having a bit of a bad month yeah you know, I was just in a ignorance is bliss mentality but yeah you know, that exactly what you we were saying before like if you pay it pays to pay attention or something or something like that like if you pay attention to your money like it's going to pay more attention to you and you're going to pick up things you're going to maybe there's that software that you are you know maybe there's like four softwares that you don't really need to be paying for that are just adding an extra 400 bucks a month or maybe you're like you know, you got random Twilio bills going out there that are way too much oh, yeah. than they need to be and you can fix something or maybe, yeah, it's like softwares where you could consolidate things or maybe you've got like ad spends a bit out of whack and you, yeah, like all, or there's too much going out on Upwork and one of your VAs is logging hours that they should be. Just like all these random things that you pick up on if you're like actually checking your numbers every every single month. But same with all areas of your business, appointments, setting sales, um, how much time your VAs are spending, all these things, they need to be tracked. But yeah. That's a super relevant yeah. one. Super, super quick about Twilio. That actually happened to me where I was looking at my budget. Like I track it every Sunday and I was like, wait a minute, why is my Twilio? I was getting Twilio rebuild like every like week and a half for like a hundred bucks. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it was abnormally high. Yeah. So <laughs> turns out I had like 14 sub accounts that were just like off ported, but I was still paying for their hosting for like their, their, their numbers. Right. So yeah. that stuff just adds up. Right. Literally. Yeah. If you're not 100%. mindful of it. Cool. I think we've got oh, a actually, bunch of, yeah. One more. <laughs> One thing, one thing. Uh, this is like so out of order. So I hope people watching this. I don't know if you're taking yeah. notes, if you're watching for fun, whatever. But one of the things that you helped me with right off the bat that was super important that now I realize how important it truly, really is. Like Hermosi obviously made a book on it, but $100 million offers, right? Like your offer yeah. is huge. Um, and I think that the framework you took me through when we first started working together one-on-one, -on -one, which was the, uh, I forgot what you called it, but like mastering your market. Yeah, yeah. Like going through that exercise uh, was like, it felt like I was back in university before I dropped yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it was funny though, because it was like, you're doing almost like homework, but except it's actually applicable to real life and it helps you make money where we did research. Like you, you put me through the exercise of like, you know, what are my competitors doing? What do they charge? What is their unique mechanism? What is their like, what do they call their offer? Like all these different things that help me think about my business in a different way. And it also helped me position my offer. Um, now ultimately that led to me, like I've gone through that exercise a few different times now, first when we started working together. And then now as I shifted my offer from kind of Facebook to the YouTube ecosystem of like paid ads and organic, um, I've gone back through those notes like a handful of times. They've been very helpful. Yeah. No, that's a really, really good point. And, um, I think that's a perfect example of one of those things that just most people aren't willing to do. And essentially like what I've got in my, yeah. um, one-on-one -on -one coaching program is I have like a module and a big worksheet i think it's like six or eight pages um, that's a fat worksheet man it's yeah. a lot of work <laughs> um and it probably takes all up like in one sitting maybe three to five hours of like actual sit down sit down work to get done um and it's called mastering mm -hmm. your market and it's just like when you either need to when you're launching a, an offer for the first time or you're doing an audit of your of your offer you just go through this worksheet that i, that I created and it just gives you the blueprint for how to beat your competition and how to create a more competitive more competitive offer because like all the homozy stuff is out there but like applying it to specifically an agency model is definitely different um and you can't just like plug in the variables of just like have a guarantee and have some bonuses and have a risk reversal and just like call out your ideal client avatar and say what outcome it is and it'll just work like it needs to be better than that like we're not in you know the early days of smma where you could just say that you run Facebook ads and everyone wants to work with you. Um, 
there's a lot more competition now, especially in issues like like real estate, and you have to have to have a unique angle to to stand out. So, yeah, that stuff works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very very good point. Um, and on, on that note too, though, actually, I, you you mentioned niches. I just want to say because I speak to a bunch of agency owners too, and um, one thing I want to add is that every niche is hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like real estate is definitely hard in terms of like, yeah, you get these guys get hammered all the time. They work with agencies, they've been burned. And like, if you're switching to another niche, like I had a buddy of mine saying, Hey, I'm trying to switch to the contractor or the roofing niche. And it's like, yo, those guys are hard too, right? Where it's like, Hey, they're a contractor. They're on the move all the time. Like, okay. If you're calling them, you probably got to deal with the gatekeeper. Like every, every niche has their own challenges. Right. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think a counterintuitive approach that or belief that would help people is that like competition is good. Um, competition means that there's, there's competition for a reason because there's money to be made. It's like the real estate niche itself. Like if you're a real estate agent, like they're in one of the competitive sales based industries on the planet competing over who's going to acquire X, Y, Z listing, regardless of what market you're in. And, but then why are there so many real estate agents? Cause there's a lot of money to be made. It's like, why are there so many agency owners? Cause there's a lot of money to be made. Why is there so many dropshippers? Cause there's a lot of money to be made. So competition is a good thing. And I think people try and like, you shouldn't be treating your business. Like you're searching for that, like hidden treasure in a cave that you have to like find, you know, X, X marks the spot on an ancient map. You're, you're trying to, you know, build a company that's the next unicorn startup. That's going to make you a hundred million dollars. Like, competition is a, is a good thing because that means that there's a proven model it's a proven industry there's a market there there's customers there's money to be made it just means that you can't be sloppy and you can't just be a complete novice and beginner and expect to make money you have to be committed to learning the game and being a, a serious business owner i want to add one thing to that because you're absolutely yeah. <laughs> right in terms of being a serious business owner like there there's a lot of competition and I also see like a lot of young, like newer agency owners, like a lot of agency owners just in general are pretty young, right? Like late teens, yeah. early twenties. And they don't, they may not have like real business experience, which is totally cool, but they see like big companies or like established companies charging, you know, one, two, three thousand $3,000 retainers uh, per month. And then they think, oh, like I'm going to sign my first client and get a thousand dollars a month. And it's like, whoa, 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 yeah. slow down. <laughs> you have no idea what you're doing. Like zero service delivery, never fulfilled before, right? Like. Uh, and, and this is my opinion on this. I don't know if you would agree. Uh, every, and everybody, I think, has different opinions on this, but I'm of the mindset, like, you need to work for free when you very first start out. 100%. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think if I had to go back in time, I didn't do that when I first started out. And I was just like, ignorance is bliss and just was naive and just went for it. And because <laughs> it was more, it was more earlier days, it kind of worked. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Like I think before 10K per month, what's actually more valuable than the money is the social proof and the experience and the the marketing assets that you can create off the off the back of that. And so it's gonna take you so much longer. Let's say you have like a, a four to six month sprint. It's gonna take you so much longer because especially if you're going with no social proof, no case studies, no experience selling to that industry, you're gonna sound like a complete, you know, newbie to the business owners that you're trying to pitch to if you're trying to pitch 1500 per month, 2K per month, straight out of the gate, think about how many less clients you would work with, less clients you would build a relationship with, less clients you'd mm -hmm. be able to test launching a campaign and a strategy and have the option to get social proof if you just pitched free trials off, off the start. And for sure, I think like that, it's it's good for a lot of agent owners that have that um, lack of confidence around their service delivery as well, because then that completely removes the downside for the clients that you're implementing a strategy for, because if you did something for free, then there's no harm, no foul if it didn't get results. So yeah, like one last kind of golden nugget for anyone out there is like seven day free trials contingent to someone providing a testimonial on the, on the back end if they get good results, then upselling them to um, a version of your paid service is the best way to get to get started in my opinion because most people think of free trials like doing a full free month of your agency service but get them in for a week do like a light implementation of what you do for a normal client spend in that week like 60 to 80 percent of what you would usually spend in a month so that you're like compressing the ad spend and spending more than what you usually would then you get results faster it looks like you know there's a lot more traction than there would usually be in a typical client scenario because there's more ad spend then you still end up upselling more people because you've 
gotten their foot, you've gotten your foot in the door, you've built a relationship with them, they've seen it work. So you're going to get paid clients anyway. And then mm-hmm. you're building a lot more social proof rapidly. Um, yeah. That's that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And then one thing to just tack on is we're probably getting late on time, but it is yep. on the note of free trials though, when you transition, it's it's okay to have those 99, 199, two, just cheap retainers just to stack wins. Like sure. I think I did probably 12 or 15 or something free trials and then like three of them stuck and became clients. And I was charging like 199 a month yeah. for like full GHL and like whatever. But I was like, yo, someone's paying me 200 bucks. Yeah. Damn, my GHL is 497. I'm losing 300 bucks a month. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like somebody said, yes, right? And then like you start to get the experience of running ads, you get lead flow, it works. And the biggest game changer for me early on this is a kind of a, maybe a closing note. I don't know if you got anything to add here, but is when I got my first free trial client a listing, I actually realized I had a shift where I was like, holy shit, I actually made that guy. Like we spent 700 bucks on ads. He got a listing and that listing to him was worth about just about 10 grand. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I just made that guy $10,000. So why wouldn't another realtor pay me? I don't know, a thousand dollars a month or whatever, $650 a month, whatever I want to charge because there's the social proof. Yeah. Right. And that really flipped the switch where it's like, Hey, this works. I made that guy money. I provided value. Therefore now I have some value that I can bring to other realtors. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. I think that's a good place to place to leave it off. We'll, we'll wrap it up there, but yeah. Thank you so, so much for coming on, sharing your, sharing your story, dropping some, some sauce and some golden nuggets. I think everyone's going to get a lot out of this, a lot out of this training. Um, final plug if you guys want to join i've got a free community called us a s s agency scaling secrets um the link is going to be in the in the description and a lot of the stuff that we talked about today um we've just crossed over 800 members which is pretty which is pretty cool um but i've literally got an entire a to z agency scaling program that allows you to scale one service to over 20 or 30k per month um and this is like literally an entire program that most agency coaches and gurus would charge you like five to eight k per five to eight k for so jump in there get access to that that's all appreciate you jumping on aaron thanks for having me liam appreciate you man